Hello you guys. For today's video, I am doing a part two to my health journey video. So if you haven't seen that yet, I suggest you go back. It's the video right before this one that explains my whole health journey. But for today's video, I'm gonna do a part two specifically on my gut health journey. I've been getting a lot of questions and a lot of requests from you guys to talk about my gut health journey and my bloating tips. So let's just jump right into it because I have so much to unpack. I also want to emphasize quickly in this video that every body is so different. Every single body is so different. So what works for me might not work for you and what doesn't work for me might work for you. I don't know. So just keep that in mind and take everything I'm saying kind of with the grain of salt because you just have to trial and error a lot of things for yourself to know what works and what doesn't. So please just listen to your body. Always, always listen to your body and figure out what works for you. Just remember that everyone's so different. So don't take what anyone says as like the ultimate truth because your body can be so different. So keep that in mind as you watch this video, please. Okay, so first and foremost, I when I started developing gut issues, I started to see many doctors and I went to my doctor and I went to GIs and they all kind of said the same thing. They said that your tests were normal, and they couldn't really do anything to help me per se. My doctor tried prescribing me some pills, but honestly, I think it just made it worse and different antibiotics to try and like kill the bad gut bacteria or whatever it was. And honestly, I think everything that I was doing from them just kept making my issues worse. So that is how I turned to the holistic side of medicine and holistic healing and changing lifestyle changes and using more natural tools and remedies to help with my gut issues. So first and foremost, I just wanted to say that like, I think that's where I started really getting my passion for holistic health because I was struggling with gut issues and all these problems that I was like, wow, there's a whole nother world of like medicine and natural and healing that just resonated with me so much more. So I started doing my own research and I found credible sources that could help me. Like, why was I getting such bad bloating? What could I do to help it? and I started to learn more about gut health and I learned that gut health really is at the core of everything to do with our body, honestly. Like everything starts in the gut, our immune system, our mood, our skin, like everything starts in the gut and if you don't have a healthy gut, you're probably gonna experience bloating and digestion issues and fatigue and breakouts, like all of these things. So it starts with the gut. And I learned that there are so many things we need to do to keep our gut healthy. And the main one, of course, is food. And what is the type of food that we are fueling our guts with? Because our guts have both good and bad bacteria. And the good bacteria will survive if you're putting in, you know, more natural, unprocessed, whole nourishing foods versus the bad bacteria that will survive and will thrive and multiply if you're feeding with a lot of process and sugary, processed sugar foods. So first and foremost, I started switching my diet to a more whole foods, natural, unprocessed diet. And what I meant by that is that I wasn't necessarily like restricting food, but instead rather I was introducing a lot of more whole natural foods that I maybe would have been scared of eating before. Like per, for example, avocado, because avocado had a lot, like has more calories since it has a higher fat content, but it's good fat. So instead of eating things that were like low calorie, because I would eat things like that were no sugar or lower calorie or whatever, because I was so scared of calories, which actually could have been making my gut issues worse. Which brings me to number two, was that I stopped eating artificial sugars. And that's something that I learned and realized that all of these like low calorie, zero sugar things can actually make your gut health worse because you're fueling the wrong bacteria and our bodies literally can't digest like these zero calorie sugars. That's why they're zero calories because we don't digest it, which can cause bloating. Number three, and I think honestly, this one's the biggest one. So first one was a whole foods, unprocessed diet and reintroducing a lot of whole nourishing foods. Second one was not eating artificial sugars anymore and these like low calorie shit. Third, this I think is the most important one actually. 
and a lot of people don't emphasize this enough so I'm gonna emphasize it for you and this had to do with the amount of stress and anxiety I was putting on my body when it cut when it came to everything I was eating so what I mean by that is that I would stress out about every single thing I was putting into my body and when you are under stress when you put your body under stress you're not going to be able to digest your foods because you're under stress mode and when your cortisol level is high and you're under stress your body doesn't think that you can digest food and that you can't use your energy for food so think about it like back in the hunter-gatherer days you were in a rest and digest phase which is also known as like the parasympathetic nervous system where your body deemed it safe to use energy to digest your food but back in the hunter-gatherer days if you were feeling stress that normally meant you had to run away from an animal or like an enemy trying to kill you so when you're under stress your body's not going to use the precious energy it needs to digest food which is a secondary process first and foremost it's survival so when our body's under stress we're not in a state of being able to digest our foods i think it's the biggest realization that helped me in my gut health was stopping was to stop stressing about every single thing i was putting in my body because i wasn't able to digest my food therefore getting more bloated and i think everyone knows that like stress and anxiety in general can be bad for your gut health and that it can really affect our stomachs but i remember being told that before and i was like i'm not really stressed like there's no other secondary source of stress in my life right now like i remember school was pretty chill and like there was nothing really going on that would necessarily cause me stress quote unquote but then i realized later down later on that it was the stress from worrying about everything i put into my body that was really the stress that was put on to my gut health and to my gut and my stomach so if there's one thing I can get across to you is to literally you are doing your body more harm by stressing about eating the damn cookie than just eating the damn cookie itself. Also, of course, try to decrease stress in other ways if you can, like deep breathing, meditation, yoga, like whatever helps you de-stress in general can always help your gut health. Okay. Fourth tip for bloating. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the whole stress thing but something that really helped me more was practicing mindful eating so what is mindful eating mindful eating is a tactic that can be used to help bring you more into the moment and in tune with your eating habits and what you are eating so what i mean by that is eating a lot slower chewing more low-key like people do not chew their food enough we just inhale and like go really really fast and we're not chewing our food enough so we need to chew more eat slower be more in the moment be present when you are eating like be really mindful of like how the food tastes how it looks like the whole experience around eating needs to be more of a mindful act and when you are able to do that you're going to be able to better understand your hunger cues so like if you're full during the meal or and i mean just in general being able to like help your body get more into that rest and digest state like i was saying your parasympathetic nervous system which is super important to get into so that our body can digest so eating slower chewing more taking some deep breaths before you eat like really slowing down in the moment to get into the zone of like digestion and being relaxed so taking some deep breaths not looking at your phone while you're eating not being di distracted while you're eating like we as a society tend to just eat really fast on the go and that's horrible for our digestion horrible like we need to be sitting down and eating slow and really making it like a ritual like a ceremony almost of like paying attention to your food and allowing your body to get into that rest and digest state if you're curious more about like the parasympathetic nervous system in general i really suggest you look it up called parasympathetic nervous system and digestion it's super interesting i've done a lot of research on it and i've heard from a lot of different people um, and doctors on like what even the parasympathetic nervous system is and why it's so important to get into that calm non-stressful state to really digest our food so i highly suggest looking it up and doing your own research on it too five another bloating tip that really helped me 
was introducing more warm liquids and teas into my days. And I know it sounds like so minuscule and like, well, duh, like water, whatever, but no, there are different tactics you could do with water to either help or harm your digestion. So let's just get into it. First and foremost, I love drinking teas all throughout the day. Ginger tea, dandelion tea, chamomile tea, things that really soothe the stomach, and also things like warm water with lemon, especially first thing in the morning, can really up and get like your digestive fire, which is often used in traditional Chinese medicine, to start and to get to get active. So when you are your digestive fire is really strong, you will be able to digest all your food. And by drinking warm liquids, you are upping this digestive fire, especially before meals. Versus if you're drinking ice cold water and cold liquids, you are suppressing this digestive fire. So that's something that really helped me was that I stopped drinking ice cold water and I started to introduce warm water with lemon, lots of teas, um, whatever, whatever it might be. And also really important is doing this first thing in the morning and before meals. So right before you're gonna eat and first thing in the morning, drink those hot liquids, drink them all throughout the day, but especially during those times. Number six, another short little tip to go with that one is to stop drinking water and just liquids in general during your meals, which I know so many people have come for me for this one. I don't care, this has helped me so much. If you are drinking especially ice cold liquids during your meals, you are diluting the digestive enzymes and like the digestive juices that you need to digest your food by drinking all these liquids instead. So while I eat, I tried to limit, very much limit the liquids and the amount of liquids I'm drinking um, until 30 minutes after my meal or right before my meal. And if I'm really thirsty and I need a drink, I'll always have like warm water with lemon or some sort of tea. But I can't even express to you guys how much this has helped me instead of like chugging ice cold water while I'm eating. So, okay, number seven, this is another really important tip is finding out what foods sit well with you and what foods don't. Because for me, for example, I realized, quickly realized that I was gluten intolerant and that gluten would cause me so much bloating and discomfort. Same thing with dairy. So now I like really try to limit my gluten and dairy. Well, gluten I never eat because I'm intolerant, but dairy consumption too, because I know it'll make me really bloated. And this could go for all types of food. It doesn't have to just be for the common, the common ones like gluten and dairy. This could be even like a fruit or a vegetable. Um, everyone's different. Tamron just died, but we back. Little intermission. So number seven is to really listen to your body and find out what foods make you feel good and what foods don't. So everyone can have one food that just doesn't sit well with them for no reason. So really paying attention to your body and seeing what foods, if any, make you really bloated and trying to stay away from those foods if you can. Number eight tip for me, like I said earlier, every, everyone is so different, so this might not work for you, but over time with my gut health journey, I started realizing certain patterns and things that helped me and didn't, so I was like really aware of them. Um, but a big one that I started to learn as, as, as I was paying more attention to it was that eating more frequently made me feel better and helped with my bloating. So what I mean by that is that I don't eat really big, huge meals at a time. And like, I don't wait until I'm starving to eat. Rather, I'd rather eat like a bunch of small meals and a bunch of snacks um, throughout my day instead of eating like one or two or three really big meals because that always kind of made me more bloated versus eating a little bit every few hours. Number nine quick tip that helped was not eating so much late at night. Not to say I don't eat late at night now, like if I'm hungry at night, I'm gonna eat. But just in general, not eating so much at night sometimes helped me. Um, so I'm not really hungry in the morning, so I don't really eat first thing in the morning and I try not to eat too close to bedtime. Um, just because I find that kind of helps my bloating the best. But of course, if I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat. One more tip I have for you guys, because this video is getting so long. Maybe I'll do a part two with more because I literally have so much gut health knowledge, um, is to start incorporating certain supplements or things that 
can and has been shown to possibly help gut health but in a more natural way so things i mean by that is like probiotics like a really good quality probiotic or celery juice first thing in the morning helps with bloating for me so much so like i'll try to drink a big thing of celery juice right away in the morning sometimes if i'm feeling extra bloated it can help with your stomach acid too, help increase it um which is a good thing if you struggle with like acid reflux and other like soothing herbs and teas like i said um like dandelion and chamomile and peppermint um just do your own research and find things that maybe work for you like i said for me probiotics and celery juice and bone broth Ooh, bone broth is another one that really helped with my gut health but as this goes with any supplements and things don't feel like you need to use them don't feel like you have to um they're more just like optional things that could help okay to wrap everything up super quick um just letting you guys know like i learned all of these things and all of these tips as i was going through my gut health journey it didn't happen overnight um but as time went on i started getting more aware of these tips that have helped me and things that have made my gut health better and it definitely took time but with time i'm at a place today where yes i struggle with bloating sometimes but not nearly as bad as it was back in the day so maybe i'll do a part two to this if you guys want even more stuff related to gut health and bloating let me know below and let me know which tip has helped you if any or which tip you're most excited to try i'm really interested so comment and let me know and yeah mwah, love you guys hope this helped